Hey folks, this is Tim from the GCC library and I'm here to talk for a couple minutes about one specific way that scientists write as they share knowledge. Um, this is a, an important part of the culture of science and that's part of what we're trying to introduce you to in this class. So here's my main point for this video. Scientists don't use quotes. They very, very, very rarely quote each other in writing. I know that in a lot of your English classes, you've been asked to use tons of quotes, and that is normal. Not in the sciences. It's not to say that scientists don't read and use each other's work, but when they do, they almost always put that work in their own words. They either paraphrase or even better, they summarize the information that they've read. This is not always easy. It's not an easy writing skill. Uh, we want you to start developing it as early as possible in your kind of life as a scientist. So, the quick version, quote, paraphrase, summarize, what are the real differences? Um, in my mind, when you quote somebody, all you're really telling your reader is that you read a thing. Here's a place where science writing is different from English class writing. In an English class, it's likely that you're kind of taking that quote you're picking it apart, you're looking at the language, you're talking about the meaning, you're talking about the author's intention, and really analyzing it and making those connections. But at least in the natural sciences, we're not really focused on the language aspects so much. We're really focused on the ideas behind the language. So a quote isn't quite as valuable for its own sake. In science, all it says is you read a thing. Now, when you kind of move up the ladder, you're moving up the ladder of complexity. Um, when you paraphrase something in your own words, a paraphrase is about the same length, but it's a different you know, set of words that you created rather than a quote. When you put something in a paraphrase, you're telling the reader that you read it and that you also really understood it. You understood it well enough to say it back. Um, and that's important. So that's great. If we move up the ladder another step, summarizing is another level of complexity. When I talk about summary or synthesis, it's when you do that, it's telling me you read the thing, you understood the thing, and now you're really thinking about the thing and you're making connections with other things that you've read and other things that you've understood. That's really what you're shooting for. That's a high level of writing. And I want to, considering that it's a high level, I want to illustrate it with a dated Taylor Swift reference. Um, so I have this quotation here. The hater's going to hate, 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 hate. Baby, I'm going to shake, 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 shake. I shake it off. I shake it off. And then you can see you've got your little citation, Swift 2014. Um, great. Congratulations. You've heard that song. Excellent. Good place to start. Moving up that ladder to the paraphrase, you might say something like Swift, 2014, notes that once a person has become a hater, that person is unlikely to change and it's best to ignore them. So we've moved past the quote and now we're digging into what the quote means. We're digging into the, uh, a deeper level of meaning. You heard it and you thought about it and now you're telling me something new. Excellent. That's what writing is all about. And now we're going to move to the, the summary or the synthesis. A recurring theme in a number of the popular singles of 2014, including Pharrell's Happy and Swift's Shake It Off, is a refusal to be brought down by negativity. Now here we're connecting several pieces of information to talk about a bigger theme and a bigger conclusion. Now every scientific paper in the world more or less, has a what's called a literature review section towards the beginning. Um, and that in that section, the author talks about all of the research that they read while they were studying their topic. And this is the this this summary or synthesis writing is the kind of writing that they all use in that section. They read a bunch of articles, group them into themes, summarize what we know and what we don't know about a topic, and try to illustrate how all their previous research influenced their own work. Now, like I said, this kind of writing is really hard and it's a skill that you will develop over time. Um, nobody expects you to do it perfectly, but we just, we just want you to give it a try in this class. Now, there are two exceptions to my general rule that we don't quote. 
Uh, the first is when someone says something really, really well. So when you're reading something and the author just put it in the perfect words and you just can't help yourself but quote, that's fine. Use your judgment. <coughs> the second is perhaps more important. Um, scientists quote when they think someone is really, really wrong as a way of showing just how wrong that person is. A quote frequently means that someone's argument is about to be torn apart. At some point, you may find yourself doing that and it's entirely appropriate in that context. So to wrap up, um, I'm sure that you've heard people tell you to use your own words in the past in your writing. I hope this kind of clarifies why that's important. It's about um, moving up that ladder and writing at a high level and really foregrounding your own thoughts. So putting your new contributions at the center of your writing rather than a bunch of quotes. Um, that's all we have for right now. I hope this was helpful. As always, feel free to be in touch with me or with another librarian if you need help with research in this class. Thanks.